There's currently a bushfire crisis happening in Australia right now. It's making global headlines and it's an absolute shocker. Now, bushfires are normal for Australia. We get them every summer, but this is like nothing we've ever seen. A number of people have died. That includes volunteer firefighters. Far too many have already died and our fire season still has months to go. But what I want to talk about is the billion animals that have died, the six million hectares of habitat that's completely gone. That means their food source, their homes. Um, we're talking, I believe the last figure was 250 threatened species. And that's only what we know right now. There are still a lot of areas that haven't been assessed yet. Um, koalas are nearly extinct. Rock wallabies. Um, oh, it's just, it's really bad. If you're in Australia and you want to make a difference and you want to help wildlife, then you can. I want to help the animals. I want to help our feathered and furry friends that don't have anywhere to live right now. So I threw this together and I'm going to show you how to do it as well. Best part is that I can link you this amazing resource. If you're in the New South Wales Blue Mountains, there is an entire list of specific nesting boxes that will help species in that area. I'm in Victoria, so I've got the East Gippsland um, book and I've got the Alpine region book. A whole range of species uh, that you can help, even down to things like people sewing pouches for orphaned joeys and, and you know burnt koala paws and horrible things like that. In the links below, you'll find your local drop-off point. Have a chat to them. There also are rules. You must follow some of the basic rules. Um, do not paint or oil the inside of the box. Um, there's certain timbers you should and shouldn't use, like treated wood. Um, you know, they need to be watertight. If you're gonna go to the trouble of making one, then you wanna make sure that it's right and it'll work. Now this box, technically, could last for decades. That's pretty cool. All of the links below will show you the local species that need homes and how to put them together. It'll tell you the do's and the don'ts. So these are the free plans that I'll be linking you to that I used for this build. I had two really old hardwood coffee table tabletops that I got from Hard Rubbish quite a while ago, 1100 by 450, and were perfect for this. I was able to get four pieces that I needed out of this tabletop, the front, the back, and the two sides. I then set about using my level as a straight edge and a guide for my circular saw to cut it down the middle. Then marked out cutting the two sides. So it's important to remember here that because I'm using this old reclaimed wood, I'm making it harder for myself. If I went down to Bunnings, it'd be a lot easier. Now I'm marking out the other cuts required. This is for the angle along the top of the sides. See there, it comes together nicely. I then need some timber for the bottom and the lid. Got these two offcuts that'll do it for the bottom. I can use this stuff for the lid. So 200 by 200 for the bottom. Cut that up. And it fits like a glove. Now onto the lid. This very old flooring. It's been out in the weather. So I'm cutting off all the junky bits. And as you see here, you need 270 by 270. Needs to be sealed. You don't want the little birds getting wet. So I've marked those out. Now all I'm doing here, because it's tongue and groove, I'm just cutting, I'm just trimming those sides up. So it's a bit neater. Again, another step that you shouldn't have to do. I use reclaimed wood, uh, which actually adds 
ton of steps. It makes it a whole lot harder. I could have gone down to Bunnings and bought a sheet of plywood and it would have taken me half the amount of time. Although the finished product does need to be painted, the interior can't be painted and this could have been covered with another animal smell or something else that might have deterred the birds so I wanted to just get rid of it. Didn't have to be smooth, just wanted to clean that old paint off. Then a small amount of waterproof wood glue to join that lid together. Shouldn't actually be using glue, just in case the birds decide to eat it, but I wanted to make sure that lid would seal. Three five mil drainage holes. Very easy. Now I'm marking out where the entrance hole will go. Now the, the plan says to make it 80 mil. I'm doing it 100 mil because then more species will be able to use it. I go to use my hole saw, but it doesn't fit. So I grab my force a bit, drill bit, and I take away as much material as I can before I start cutting out that hole. Grab the jigsaw with a fine blade. And yes, it's a hole, but not a very good hole at all. But it'll work. So I clean it up with a file. So these are the climbing grooves that I, that I was talking about. I set a very shallow depth on my circular saw. These don't need to be neat. They don't need to be pretty. They just need to be functional. These grooves on the interior of the box will help baby birds climb out. And on the exterior of the box, they will help birds get in. I'm measuring where I need to drill the holes. I want to pre-drill holes for when I screw it together. I will not be using nails and I will not be using glue. Screws are the best thing for this job. Again, pre-drill all the holes, get the screws in. Look at that, pretty solid box. So that's actually looking pretty good, but that lid, I want it to seal better. So 15 degrees on the miter saw, and I cut a bevel, which will help it sit flush. Then I add the hinge. Then I go overboard and add this little strip to make sure definitely no water gets in. I probably went overboard here with these little strips. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna to be too drafty in there for the little birds. Now we'll come back to this, but this is an old cafe blind that I'm cutting up here. Just a small strip. Now I use this builder strap attached to the back of the box, but there are many other options you can use. Then, although the box can be rough, it's a good idea to sand down uh, just some of the rough edges. There's no point in having sharp little splinters when you can, you know, when you can help it. Now this is another added extra bit that you don't have to do, but I decided to do. A couple of old bits of pallet lined up where it was going to meet on the inside of the door. The, the inspection lid, bang, 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 few nails. And that again helps it from stop being drafty and it also insulates so the it a little. first coat of paint goes on and what you want here is a normal water-based external quality house paint for an undercoat and a few overcoats. Oil-based is toxic, so stick with water-based. And then let it dry. Now it's a good idea to have your wits about you if you're working on it and the lid's open. <laughs> anyway, so another coat of paint to protect it from the elements. When choosing a paint color, you want to make sure that it's a color that will try and blend in. It won't stand out to predators and it won't be too dark that it will make the birds too hot in the summer. So all in all, I gave this box four coats of this paint. Now here's that cafe blind. This little bit of plastic will help keep the inside of the box dry. I then added this stick to the front as a bit of a landing spot. Another extra that you don't have to do, I've decided to add those 
old fence palings around the edge. You'll see my messy paint job. That's fine. You just don't want paint all over the interior. This entire build took me less than a day. Okay, look, my hole is pretty skew if, but nature is never symmetrical and tree hollows aren't even. It's not supposed to look pretty. It's supposed to be functional and that's what it is. This is going to provide a safe and warm home for owls, brush tail possums, galahs or corellas. The only thing left for me to do now is to take this to my local drop off point and there they will decide where it needs to go the most based on the species that it suits and professionals will put it in the right spot in the right area as soon as they can. If you've just come here and you've just found me because you want to help wildlife then that's great because there's going to be a heap more coming soon. Before you jump into anything, find your local drop off point and send them a message, send them an email, give them a phone call and say, do you need nesting boxes? They might say, yes, we need heaps. Or they might say, we actually need a lot more that are for this specific species. Don't make any of these, make more of these. And then you know you'll be making a difference. I tell you to follow the rules because that is important. However, I have bent some of the rules and the rules I've broken will still help. So I've picked this box, which is uh, listed as perfect for the crimson rosella. There are a lot of birds, a lot of other species that will use a box of this specific size. If this nesting box had been built for smaller species of birds, then the stick will actually help predators get in there and steal those sure, eggs. But if you do include a stick, that you still include those climbing grooves behind them. A galah will or chew through that stick in minutes and it'll be gone forever. But those climbing grooves will always remain. These hardwood palings around the edge, I didn't need to do that, but I wanted, it, I wanted to be sure that it wasn't going to be drafty because I want whatever's in there to be really comfortable. These are also um, extras that you just don't have to do, but I've done. So you'll be able to make this box a lot easier than me. It doesn't cost much. It didn't cost me anything because I use scraps. I'm hoping that I'll encourage those who don't normally work with wood. You feel like you don't have the skills, you don't have the tools, but you want to give it a go and you've got a lot of questions, leave me a comment. I will help you. I will guide you through this. There is a lot of other information on the internet that can help you. I am telling you now that I will assist you every way that I can. Don't be shy, I'm happy to take you through it. If you can't leave a comment because you're, you don't have a YouTube account, then I am on Facebook, I am on Twitter, I am on Pinterest, I am on Instagram. You can message me or comment in any of those places and I will, I will find out. Thanks for watching, have a great day.